Hello and welcome to another episode of the London Something podcast with myself, DJ Ron. Um, as usual, I'd like to thank everybody who's been joining us on this journey of this podcast over the last, what, 18 episodes I think we're up to now. I'd like to also thank um, West End DJ who have been nothing but supportive throughout this whole campaign. And, uh, and yeah, I'd like to introduce my next guest who I've known, I, I think I've known my next guest since he entered this field, you know what I mean? And as a young boy at the time who then grew into adolescence, who then grew into a man, is probably one of the most well-known and probably one of the better MCs out there. Big shout goes out to my brethren, MC Shabadi. We yes, say Shabs, brother. you're right, yeah? Good to see you, mate. Good to see you too, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks um, for having me, man. Yeah, yeah, and thanks for joining us, man. You know what I mean? Thanks for joining us, I really appreciate that. Um, I remember um, very, very early on, do you know what I mean? Like when you first came into the game, because I recalled you as a sort of like almost like a raver who is also emceeing. Yeah. Do you get yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll get to all of that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We'll get into all of that a bit later on because loads have been said about your career and your life as an MC yeah. and your journey within that s- sphere. But, you know, this podcast, as I said to you earlier, we had a little chat earlier yeah. on, you know, like, and I think you know from watching the series, yeah. you know what I mean? Is that more, it's more about the life that got you to where you are, Yeah. you know? And so with that, I normally ask people to start from like sort of like their earliest memories, like growing up as a as a child, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like so walk me through, like if you can, like some of your earliest memories. Um my earliest memories, my childhood was to be fair, I have to big up my mum, do you know what I mean? I have to big up my dad. Um obviously uh she 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 worked three jobs, do you know what I mean? She took me and my brother around the world from a young age. So I was pretty much blessed. Um, um, what did your mum do? Well, she what, worked. She just worked in a clothes shop. She worked. Over, do you know what I mean? She just worked down Roman Road, and um, she worked at a pub. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? She had three jobs. Do you know what I mean? She was like, when I check it, because obviously I grew up with my brother, um, me and me, my mum and my brother, um, in Hackney, um, and then like I, I met my dad when I was about seven. Because obviously my dad and my mum split up, um, and then I started to go over to North London to my dad's. Um, and yeah, like, so like he lived in, at the time he lived in Finchley. Um, so it was like a, a different life for me when I went up to North at the weekends. Like I grew up in Hackney and whatever, but I had that from early. Yeah. So, um, there was good times, do you know what I mean? Like my mum obviously done everything for me and my brother. Um, um, and then like I went to my dad's and then he had, had a different side of, of life up there, you know, he was into the music. My dad was like a, he's a carpenter, but he was a tour manager for the Pistols back in the day. No way, really? So yeah, so I was connected to the music, Mm, like, mm, so. mm. At a young age, I met a lot of like pop stars and things like that, you know what I mean? Like I was around people like that. Um, He was good friends with Madness, Suggsy and Carl. Um, So like, we used to hang around and up there, you know what I mean? Go to football matches at a young age. So I was like from like, Eight until 11, 12, um, you know what I mean? And like his best mate is Steve Jones in in, um, in LA for the Pistols. Wow. Obviously he's a, um, you know, the guitar player or yeah, whatever. Yeah, um, and he used to live with my dad. So basically they had a flat, in, when I used to stay with my dad in Finchley, they lived together. Um, and I found out later on that my dad got him clean. He cleaned him up because my dad's never really drunk or took no drugs or anything like that in his life. Um, um, and he, he cleaned his friend up, so obviously like they was best mates. So going back to the whole childhood thing, yeah. So like that was that was my life at weekends at my dad's. Obviously like it was a different life to live in in Hackney. That's interesting. Um, yeah, very. So yeah, and just like the music, I think like with the whole music thing, I used to be into football like before the music thing. So I was a semi-pro f- professional. Mm. So play for like West Ham. I was on the books at like West Ham from when I was like 12, 11. I was playing like five times a week. Wow, okay. Um, so I played for like all the top county teams, like Wadham. Do you know what? We, we, we've had a few people come through here, but it used to be ballers, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> There's been a few men no, come through said, who used to be ballers. I know, I know. I know, no, Brock, I know I've watched Brocky's episode because I know I used to play with Brocky. Right. In Nyinga, I was a youth. I used to watch them and play. Just I was f- all about football before mm. music. 
Like I like music and whatever, but I didn't even experience music like that. Like it was just pop music growing up in the 80s or whatever. Um, but I was a football man and going up to my dad's, my dad's took me to matches. He's watching all the old videos and, and at his house and things like that. So I was just, I was a football fanatic, do you know yeah, what I mean? I yeah. still am, do you know what I mean? To be fair, but like obviously, Back then, I used to play, and I was just I had that ambition. I wanted to be a footballer, and my dad had links as well. So um, I was doing football and then doing all that, and then bam, I, got, I had a car accident. Mm. So I got run over. Do you know what I mean? And I was actually coming from a game. I was on a, a Sunday night. I got I got I got licked down. Do you know what I mean? Um, got off the bus at um, Stoke Newton Common. Yeah. And a car swerved round and I ran in front of the bus and bam, it just oh, went over my leg. Yeah, yeah. And broke my ankle, I had like a, it wasn't even, it was a fracture. Mm. Back then it was really bad, like, it's worse than a break. Okay. Um, so I crushed my ankle basically, it just bent my, my, my foot round. Uh -oh. So I was like, mm -hmm. I was devastated, obviously, like, mm. I'm a footballer, innit? I was, my team come up to the hospital and visited me and all that. Like, I was really into football a lot. Mm. I was in three different sides at the time. Um, and yeah, that was heartbreaking, man. They said I ain't gonna be able to play football for a year. Um, so I was just like, what am I gonna mm, do? Do you yeah. know what I mean? It weren't like I was thinking about that's not gonna be my life or my career. I was just doing it. Mm -hmm. And then um, I started just, at the time, I was still into music, like, like reggae. I like going to all these Hackney sound clashes and I probably, like, sometimes I'd be the only white guy there, do you know what I mean? But I'd just be like mm. going to these park raves and watching these men perform on stage, like, all the Nightingale lot and the Holly Street and all that. It was like a, it was like a thing for me. Like that, that, that was what I was into. I was just like, I just liked the energy. I was, Cause I grew up on sound tapes as well. So like uh, the reggae thing was like something that I, I looked up to them, man. Like, so I was like, right, I would love to do that. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then, yeah, just basically, just basically got into music, man. By it, it happened in the block, like going to school, walking to school, friends tapping and all that yeah. shit. Um, a man just like busting up some lyrics. Do you get what I'm saying? And then that, yeah, just it, it, that's what got me. That's what got me into MCing. Yeah. And what, and what was it like at school? I mean, I mean, you 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 spoke then about you know being like between like seven and sort of like twelve years old and and eleven, twelve years old, being with your dad and seeing those different yeah. sides of your li of, of life. You know yeah. what I mean? Which I think whether you recognise it or not, probably had a big impact on the person that you would become because you're able to, at an early age, see different walks of life. Dif that's what it is. You get what I mean? And most people, then they're, mm. they're not able to do that. So whether you recognise yeah. it or not, what yeah. was it like? What was it like, um, you know, like when you think about school days and stuff like that, you know, like were you kind of like, like an academic, you know, like, mm. you know, like how was that? If you, if well, you I, was a, I, was, I was really... My, my mum even said it. I was really intelligent at school. Okay. I was good up until mm. the second year. Okay, second then, year of yeah, secondary second school. Second year of secondary school okay. was good. Yeah, yeah. And then it was actually after the first year because I got put in a class um, in secondary school and I met all new friends, as you do. You go yes. from primary to secondary. And my two best friends, they went to different schools. Mm -hmm. There was the two guys, Tom and Darren, there was the two guys that I was best friends in primary school with. They just went off to other schools and I went to I went to Kingsland, do you know what I mean? So obviously when I've gone to the school, everything was cool and then basically they split up. After the first year, they split up our class mm -hmm. because obviously for certain reasons, I don't know, like it was just, they was like, oh, three uh, things going in this class, three people's going in that class and they split us all up and I went into, I went from D to B. Mm. And when I went into B in the secondary school, it was a different thing. I'm not going to lie. Like, when I was, you say D to B, what does that mean? It, it, it was just like A, B, C, D. It went up to like F, G. Mm. It was different classes. Okay, it, it, they're it, just it, classes, yeah. not, not, not so, academic. Yeah, 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 so yeah, it was just like that to explain it. Um, yeah. So I went from D to B. I was in D and then they split up D and made like a class less yeah. and put all different pupils in different classes. Mm -hmm. And I went to B. And when I went to B, like I just bucked up with some people and it was just like... You know, these people was into bunking off school and do it. And it was like that. And yeah, yeah. Bruv, I don't know what it was, but... It shifted you. Probably at around that time there, yeah. there was a lot of things going on in the background. Like, I was hanging about on the estate with people. And I was seeing, like you said, different things. I was going to North London, do you know what I mean? I was seeing, my mind, my mind was just all over the place. So, yeah, I started bunking off of school, do you know what I mean? Doing things like that. I weren't really into... Like I just lost the ed like the education side. I just had my own 
And how old were you at that time? Um, how old? So I was like, I'd say like 13. Okay, so 13, that's a very, four, yeah, very 13, important stage of yeah, your, like, your 13, development. Yeah, 13, yeah. 14, I'd say. Mm. Um, so around that time there, I started like hanging around with different people at school. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to lie to you. They was doing things that it weren't, like in this day and age, like I look back at it, I was like, raw, like, do you know what I mean? Like the people that I was hanging around, I was seeing things. I was seeing man get robbed. I was seeing, you know, man going to other schools, fighting, doing all this mad shit. But I weren't really, I was just kind of like- I'd, Hanging I, with them, yeah, but you but weren't I'd, really your thing. I had more, fr I had different friends. Mm. I could go, I, it, go back, it goes back to like, honestly, like me going to different areas, moving with different people. I've had that blessing to do that, even now, like, some people can't go some places for the for different reasons. Do you know what I mean? And like, and and I was able to go to North London, to East London, you know, hang about with this person at school, hang about with that person. I was cool, kind of cool with everyone. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, and I just see loads of different things. So anyway, the people that I was hanging around with, they was bunking, they was doing all these things, and then I just got into that. And then mm. one thing led to another, and it was pirate radio. Like pirate radio got. You know what I mean? When at the age there, like mm. 13, 14, when, when I got into it. Listening to it, yeah? Well, yeah. listening to yeah, it at yeah. first because it come from CB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you know about yeah, pirate so radio, right. man would know yeah. about CB. I yeah. had my CB. I yeah, went yeah. to man's yard and man was like, ch ch do 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 And I was speaking to people in South End yeah, and girls yeah, then right. from yeah, yeah. up north and yeah, all yeah. that. I mean, a lot of people, you're right, a lot of people might not recognise that, but a lot of our... Um, sort of like um, subscription base would probably remember it because it, they're of that age group. You know what I mean? That's Ex what I'm But saying. explain just for those who so, might not uh, know what the Pi CB yeah, was. Yeah, CB is old because I mentioned it. And I was like, wow, CB, that's like going back. So you had basically code names. And I didn't even know about it. I just went to my mate's house. And I used to see these big aerials outside their house. Mm. And I was thinking, what's that? It's like a... You know, like a scaffolding pole yeah, with yeah. a thing, but high, bruv. Mm -hmm. And man used to have them all over the flat. So I'm like, right, and it's like, yeah, CB. So my uncle was on it and he told me about it. Mm -hmm. and then my next door neighbor was obviously Miley from Weekend Rush. Mm -hmm. So like, he, I see his one and then I went in his yard and he showed me, look, look, you could talk to Gallum from over here. And mm -hmm. I was like, what? And like, boom, boom, <laughs> do, do, yeah, do, um, dot, dot, dash, yeah, 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 this and that and all that. And <laughs> it's like all that thing, you have to click and all mm -hmm. that. Uh, and then people start, it's like a walkie-talkie, what, like, what like the police have got, you know, like, yeah, in their yeah, car right, with a yeah, thing, yeah, and then yeah. you just hold the thing and then you're talking, do you know what yeah, I mean? So yeah. it's like mad. And then pirate radio, obviously, was the next, the next step. Um, but, yeah, I mean, around them, and my kids, I was just going to north, going to east, and hanging around with different people. Like, in Hackney, it was different. Like, man was like, what? Bruv, lend me a hand. Boy, buy me a drink. Let me build a spliff. Or, or, you know, back then, or, mm. or let me do, oh, was that? give me a cigarette. Because mm. it weren't even zoots and that back mm -hmm, then, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It was, and then North London, man was like, bruv, do you want a drink? Mm. Do, you want a, do, you want, do you want something to eat, bruv? <laughs> we yeah, said most had more we, money on Yeah, bruv, bruv, there's 20 fags there, bruv, <laughs> yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, or whatever, yeah. do you know what I mean? It was a different mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was only from Fringy Park to Hackney, but... That's interesting, back, yeah, But yeah. back in the day, mm. Fringy Park to Hackney was a big journey, as you know. Of course it was, yeah, Because, yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> London, Hackney to West End was like... It's like going to the other side of the yeah, world, that's like bruv. going to Devon or yeah, something. It, yeah, you get yeah, what I'm yeah, saying to you back then, like... Um, and we should do red bus rovers and that, and that's and like, like, like and that's all part of just getting about as well mm -hmm. and having that confidence. Because man was like, "What's red?" He used to get a red bus rover for like fifty p mm. or whatever it was, and you can go everywhere. And you just get on the bus and <laughs> yeah, go yeah. and go south and mm. see. And I've never been south before. Mm. I'm like, Ross, mm. do you know what I mean? But back then you don't. You just do it. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah, so I suppose you know, being able to do that was a be was definitely like a blessing and a benefit for me because obviously I knew there was a bigger world out there. Some people just thought London was the world or mm. back then as we was kids, because mm. you didn't look out, like you didn't know about up north and all that when we was growing up. Yeah. Um, there was no internet um, and things like that. Mobile phones was a myth. Like I remember seeing my first mobile phone when I was about, I don't know, I was young, man, and the man had this big box thing and all that, yeah, with, and he used with to carry the, it. With, yeah, the, was, with the actual phone, the, yes, with the lead yeah, and yes, everything. <laughs> yes, the radio station, man, had them numbers there. Uh, uh. Um, so that was, anyway, that was thing. But growing up, you just didn't know mm. how, how, big the, how big the world is unless you see certain things. And I was going to, like, Spain, you know, America. I went mm. to Florida, I went to Jamaica. Yeah. I, I mean, went, that is quite special, considering, yeah. essentially, you were still 
and without any shadow of a doubt, come from a working class family. Oh, yeah, that's you know what, what I'm saying. saying so, it's not but yet, yeah, yet, yeah, those sort of experiences yeah. are not necessarily uh, akin to working class families. No, no. Do you get what I mean? Not, definitely def- not in, not in, not in that time. No, you know, it'd be like, no. yeah, you might lick a Spain or something yeah, like that, yeah. or you might lick a. You know what one I mean? Tea. A little yeah, one, yeah, yeah. I was, a Portugal I was like or something. Four or five holidays a year. My mum, yeah. my mum, like you know, like I said, she she done everything to give us everything. So I, I'm so grateful for that, and I love her for that so much. I mean, and you got and you got one brother, right? Yeah, yeah. I got well, I got two. You got two brothers. Yeah, I got right. two brothers. Okay, yeah, right, so okay. Blue come later. Okay, so, I mean, right, me yeah. and Ronnie grew up with my mum, and obviously, yeah. I, you know, what I'm saying like my brother's my um, middle brother. He's like. Four years younger than me. Okay, right. So, okay, like, so you're the eldest. Yeah, I'm the eldest. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah. and then like, yeah. So we've got separate dads. Mm, do you know what I mean? Mm. So he 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 used to go to his dads, and I went to my dads, and mm. that's how it is. You know, what yeah, I mean? we yeah, just grew up like that. Obviously, like with his age differences and whatever. Um, but you know, like I say, he's my brother, and I love him. Mm. And um, yeah, like we we still got relationships. Do you know what I mm, mean? Mm, nah, mm, and it's, mm, it's yeah, just yeah. mad. Do you know what I mean? Our things our things change and things move on, but. Like I say, blood's blood, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just been, it was, my, my growing up was quite good. But then, obviously, you know, I got involved in, I got involved in stuff, bro. Like, like I said, like, going back to, like, in the back of school days when I was hanging around with certain people and I was moving and I was able to do that. Like I said, not everyone was able to do that for their skin colour reasons, for the way they're from. Um, yeah, you know, it's, the way it's, they are. Do yeah, you know what it's, I mean? It's very interesting because, um, and I believe this of every inner city community, yeah, that there are a few. Um, when you're at school, I mean, I think most people can relate to this. When you're at school, yeah. it's this like everybody just mixing up with everybody. Yeah. Everybody's mixing up with everybody. There yeah. isn't actually colour, doesn't come yeah. into it at all. You never even never. considered when it. Going out, it was never yeah, like you that. never really considered it. Yeah. But then because of the areas and because of the. The not just the areas, but I also think it's people kind of grouped together with with people, mm. and so you end up having like best friends that you might have had at school, but your your culture potentially doesn't resonate with them anymore. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But there's the, always a few man from yeah. the other, from another culture that resonate. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. and so for me, I had a. You remember Rusty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rusty, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rusty's so Rusty was like that. Top geezer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. So of Rusty. Course. Which I'm assuming is is where you're about to yeah, lead into. Yeah, do you get yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. Rusty has been one of the man them uh, from Irish yeah. descent, yeah. and as long as we've known him, yeah. Rusty has been into black culture in terms mm. of sound system. In that area of yeah. black culture, do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Sound system, MCing, yeah. dance. You know, like, yeah, well, yeah. wasn't dance all at the time, but you know, reggae yeah, music yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like the that. The culture, the culture. But I think it's important for people to understand that. Cause even when I was growing up, you know, you know, I used to get it. I used to get it from my white friends. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah, I can imagine them. you would have done. They'd be like, "Oh, you, you're trying to act black. Yeah. Oh, we, we doing rolling up your trousers, you mug, and all that." Cause I'll be around, man. And trust me, like when you're younger, like I said, go back to that. I can go around here. I can go. I can hang around with that one. I can go up north London. I can, I can go west London. I know man over here. And man, are like, right, they stay. They're just in Hackney. Do you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm, going, I'm able to do all these things, especially when. North and East went into a little bit of a, mm. a thing as well. That was like a bit of a sticky time, but we'll get to that. But I'm saying like, for me, it's like, but going back to the whole, to the, to, to the whole moving around people, then things rub off on you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Um, um, most importantly for me, growing up in Hackney, it was a thing like, it, it was natural. It wasn't a thing you thought about. You weren't trying to be like that. It was just something, mm. That you was into, your mates was into it. Like I used to hang about on the flats where I'd probably be the only white guy that'll be hanging around with the black guys mm-hmm. them. Do you know what I mean? But they're my mates. Like I'll go to school with them. I'm not thinking colour and No, you're that. not. No, no. I go yeah. to them, I'll sit down in their and houses. I, yeah, and I'd imagine that the, the colour only came into it yeah. when other people are saying, yeah. Oh, you're only da da da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Then you're yeah, like, but what? yeah, no, I, I but I'll be around my, 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 my black friends back in the day and they, and they and they talk about white people like so it's, but they talk in front of me yeah. like I'm not white. <laughs> and then, but a couple of times, a good man would say to me, bruv, no disrespect, you know, but mm. rah, 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 rah. Mm. do you understand what I'm saying? Bruv, no disrespect, I'm not, you get what I'm saying to you? Mm. And I'm, enough times I'm seeing that, do you know mm. what I mean? And I just, mm. I used to just let it bounce off because I used to think, do you know what? Like, love is love, you know mm. what I mean? you got heart mm-hmm. and that's it. Like, real is real, do you get what mm. I'm saying to you? So um, it's not about that trying to act and trying to be, 
be this. I used to get offended a little bit. Do you know mm. what I mean? I'm not gonna lie. For um, there's been times where people, you know, like the ragger days. Mm. You know, these man used to put elastic bands in their trousers mm. and all them. Mm. Mm. I was part of that, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I grew up. <laughs> I like the trend. You get me? All my all my boys were doing it, rolling mm. up their trousers. But when I go to my uh, the other side now, I like the say like the. The weekend rush side mm, mm, and the cockneys, them, mm. they, bro, you, you know what I'm saying? You're getting gunned for that. Mm. But I didn't, I didn't care. I didn't care. It was what I was into and what I'm, I'm and what I got. I used to like reggae music when man used to say, What's that? Mm. Like, what's that bag of noise and this and that? And I used to love it because I used to love the energy, um, do you know what I mean? The stage show performances and that. And I used to just, I grew up to listening to Papa San and Ninja Man and watching the Super Cla Ninja Man Clash and yeah. I loved that. Yeah, 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 do you know what yeah. I mean? So that, that was that was me and I just my point being I just do done what I wanted to do, man. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna let no one's opinion tell me anything. Even back in the day, like, yeah, he said just brush it off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're like, like I, I was tough, tough where I, where we grew up. Where you grew up, yeah. It weren't no joke thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying, like, on a real level, like, man, I feel recognise this in the scene as well, like, where I grew up, in this area, mm -hmm. where we are now, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it weren't no joke. No, it wasn't, no. Do you know what I mean? I come from Nightingale Estate, they used to call that Murder Mile. That's right. Do you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I was right in the middle of the this, of this estate in the flats. Obviously, growing up, you never thought of that. You used to hear about crimes mm -hmm. and hear about this and that, but when it's actually people that you know and... People that are around you doing all this crazy, man, and one minute they're there, next minute they're not, they're in jail, or you learn a lot from that, do you know what I mean? But you don't think about it at the time. Mm. But looking back, you say, right, that made me tough skinned. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so definitely. when you've got to deal with certain things later on in life, it's nothing you know because you've been through it. that. Yeah, yeah, that's and right, you know what? Yeah. It's not about negative or positive or nothing like that. It's about just dealing with it at the time, right? the best way you can. Because mm. you don't think. Oh, I'm gonna do all things positive. I'm gonna do. You just—it's reaction. Every yeah. action is a reaction. So, mm -hmm. you might see one of your mates, and then next minute, like he's one of your best friends. The next minute, you ain't seen him for 20 years again. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, raw, and then you don't understand when you're growing up. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, and Shabba, you know, you 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 was speaking about, and um, we're speaking about Hackney there, yeah. and, and and the influence it has on us. You get yeah. what I mean? You yeah. know, like subconscious even influence, you know what I mean? But consciously you were saying earlier how, you know what I mean, you would like go to like sound like sound, you know, like you know, like dances sound and clashes and, yeah, clashes yeah, 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 and yeah, things yeah. like that. So 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 do you think it was like more that the when you were around sort of like you know the man name and all the rest of it, that that's what got you into the music or was you already sort of like gravitate into it anyway? Well, I was kind of, like I said, I think the way that I got into it, honestly, was was man tapping, bro. Mm. Man tapping in the block. We used to link up. What in do the you block. mean by tapping? Like, so basically, we used to all chip in a pan, yeah? Mm. And we used to get a little draw, yeah? Mm. We'd go sands on the road, we'd buy a little bit of, bit mm. of ash. Mm. And then man then would start, you know what I mean? Smoking was a bad thing. Obviously, my mum never smoked, do you know what I mean? Like things like that. I had to wash my hands when I come in the yard and all mm. them things mm. there. As my mum found out she'll do, do a. This is all going on behind. The parents back, you know, this is at school and yeah, we're course, coming yeah, home yeah. every day, like eating our dinner and like everything's cool, you know, but mm. things is going on in the daytime. Mm. And we used to bunk off school and we used to go to the block. We used to go Nightingale in, in the estate, 21st floor, mm. and there'll be 10 of us up there. And man start tapping bridging on the thing. You know what I mean? We need a shabba from, you know, the man run. <laughs> and everyone's there, and the rhythm's going there, whoa! And, it, and there's no rhythm, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just man just tapping on the, the thing. Yeah. And one man will beatbox, <laughs> yeah. and the next man will beatbox, and the next man start doing some hip hop flows mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. talk about Maggie Thatcher and mm -hmm. all that. I remember them days there, yeah, bruv. Yeah. That's, That's what That's got beautiful. me into the music. Well, and I tell man they laugh, but there was a couple of man them that was sick. Mm. Let me tell you, they had some flows. Like, mm. man was coming with his yard flow, and mm -hmm. Marvel Bridge and T Boy would, he, trust me, buddy, he would come with the next thing. and. And then even man that wouldn't chat, like just be part of the clique, had to join in yeah, yeah. And, and get bad. So mm -hmm. next time he's coming with his thing, so man would go on, and it wasn't a writing thing, it was a freestyling mm -hmm. thing. But man just had it mm -hmm. to the beat, everything. And then we wanted to be like that. There's then the next stage was going to these raves, mm -hmm. going to trends, going to like, you know, like Nightingale, like Dance Town. Do you know what I mean? They had little dance halls running in the park. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Flexi Creation used to do little, they used to get flats, 
um, in within Nightingale and find her like a squat. And then boom, next thing, reggae dance, I go on ninth floor, you get me, or 11th floor. Yeah. And them time, we're you, man. But the bigger lot, because I've always hanged around with older people, yeah. so the bigger lot brought us in, like the Evers and the, the man them from the flats, do you get what I'm saying, the Rangers and whatever, like we looked up to them man there, because, you know what I mean, big up them man there, because yeah. when I grew up, them man were my idols, bruv. Do you understand? Because they was doing it. They was actually at the parks, mashing up the dances, going from place to place. Do you know what I mean? And, and I see that at a young age. Then time I'm about 14, 15. Yeah. And I'm like, rah, like, I want, you know what I'm saying? This is mad. But my thing is, so with the school situation now, basically, I don't know what happened, but I had, I had some intelligence, bruv. Like, so basically I was bunking school every day, but the school put me on report because of my attendance record and whatever. Yeah, I used to go in, so I clocked the system. Mm. So I went, I went into school at like nine o'clock, I'd register in, and I'm 9.30, I'm gone. Mm. And I ain't coming back until this lesson at 2.30, and then when they see my face at the end. And that's how I was running it for two years. Ron, let me tell you, even that parents' evening, I don't know how I got out of the, all these things, the letters and everything, but I was getting the petrol station man from Clapton to sign my report every day. Mm right, for all these different lessons. And this was going on for six months. And my mum was working and doing all these things. And I was coming home, showing her my report. Excellent, good, excellent, good, and all that. Oh, I was a bit bad today, rear, rear, rear. And I was paying him £2.50 a day to fill in my report for me every day <laughs> for six months. And I was out on road doing God knows what. Mm. I was in Razzle Dazzle, I was up the cab station at Clarence Road. <laughs> I was in Nightingale. I was running over here, I was going to North London, yeah? And I'll do this every day, bro, for six mm. months. And then it come to the stage where some things happened at the school, like, like schools were coming to other schools and causing madness, like Homerton and Hackney Downs would come down mm. and the man them, and it was just madness. And I got into a little bit of, yeah, I was hanging around with people, fell into the crime thing. Do you know what I mean? Started to do that when I didn't need to. Do you get what I'm saying to you? It was all to do, all to, all to impress. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm being honest, like back then it was just about impressing, do you get what I'm saying to you? It wasn't about... I think that was a lot for a lot of people. Like, you know I mean, you know, like, and, and, then, and then it becomes normal. Yeah, it becomes normal. Then you normal normalise it. You hang around with people, so yeah. like I said, people from East was on different things. Yeah. There was on some low life things like crime and shit, but man from North, there was on different moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was doing other things, so I'm not saying any crime was good. But back then we just did it to just dibble and dabble until things got serious. Yeah. Man started doing things and people started to get arrested. Mm. And then like, I, I, I got nicked, do you know what I mean? I got nicked a few times, you know what I mean? M my mum said to me, listen, next time, I'm not coming to get you from the police station. Do you know what I mean? I was for various different things, do you know what I mean? Um, then my dad started getting involved, do you know what I mean? Come down and sorted me out. He said to me like, do you know what I mean? He said, you know what I mean? Just shook me up, mm. said to me, I ain't coming to get you either, do you know what I mean? Cause I thought that was my way out mm. and then, I remember getting nicked in Epping. I got nicked up there. We went up there from Hackney, a couple of the man them. Um, and all the cars used to be open, like yeah. in Epping and all that, they used to be open. So we used to, we're from Hackney, we used to just open the cars, take the things, fill up our bag and come back. We, we went there one day, we cleaned up. Yeah. We come back the next day, eat like idiots. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like they, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what, you think this is some free world or something mm, like that? Mm, mm, mm. They nicked us straight away. As soon as we got to the station, they was looking out for us, arrested us. I got nicked in Onga. And then I phoned my mum, my mum ain't coming to get me. I phoned my dad, my dad's not coming to get me. Mm. They're just leaving me in there now. Do you get what I'm saying? They're saying, listen, we ain't coming to get you. And then I phoned my aunt, do you get what I'm saying? My aunt said, yeah, she come and got me. And then from that day, I said, you know what? A Couple of my mates from that went jail. And I got, I got community service, do you know what I mean? I went and done my community service up Kent, Kentish Town, did my time, do you know what I mean? And even there, at the community service, there was like, what heap of badness going on at, at the, you know, because it's mm. the worst of the worst there. you got people mm. there, I know a man from Hackney that they're, that they're in jail still now, mm. do you know what I mean? So it's like, that, them sort of people around there, and then that was the next thing, but I weren't on the crime thing. From there, I was like, listen, this ain't me. Mm. I got locked up, I cried my eyes out in the cell, mm. I said, I don't, I don't like this. I remember I was young. Such do you a know recurring mean? theme, you know. You know Such I mean? a recurring theme. It's like, which is good because yeah, you know, like yeah, that you yeah. hear this thing about, oh, he's a career criminal. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? You hear yeah. this a lot. Uh, um, and why? Because they don't have that moment. They don't have that moment where they go, I've had enough of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 
I, I mean, I, I shouldn't, I, to be honest with you, like, I didn't need to do all that shit there. Just In got, the I just place, fell into yeah. it and it was like, and this ain't cool, do you know what mm. I mean? Like, this ain't cool. I was more into gal. Mm. I was more into girls, do you know what I mean? Going to, to going up Epping, do you know what I mean? And, and checking girls, that would come later. So, like, when I got to 14, 15, that was the end of that. All the guys that I was hanging around with were still into it. It's even like, it wasn't even a thing they used to call you up because you used to just meet, man, and they used to come knock for you at your door mm. or whistle at your window. Do you know what I mean? So it was a, like, nah, man, I'm not on it, man. Do you know what I mean? My boy, like, you know what I mean? Yes. And I just moved on and I just went to North London. Man was on other crimes and other things up there, but mm -hmm. I moved with different crowd that was into music. Mm -hmm. And like I went to all these stage shows and I met man up there from North London, like Basco, he's an artist now as well. Like them time there, he taught me how to chat as well properly, like mm. get lyrics out and start writing them. And mm. I watched them man, their inspira inspiration, man, like mm -hmm. inspired me big time. And I want to big him up Basco as well, because he's one of he's one of the veterans out there. Um, and like, I still see them man now, and them man are proud of me, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Them man mm -hmm. see me say, listen, do you know what I mean? So I was on a path from there, from music. And I was doing pirate radio, um, and I was still bunking school. And then I got I got caught out. Obviously, I got found out. And then I said to my mum, I ain't going back to school. So I never took none of my GCSEs. I never took none of my exams. Mm. And I just went freelance. Do you know what I mean? I just kind of knew. I think in the back of my head that I was on a, to do something what I wanted to do. Like I was on a path, and this was music. And I didn't realise because I didn't think that I'd be working um, and getting paid for something I love to do. Mm. And I was just doing it. And then there was a time, like, before I got into the music, am I going to go and get a job? I had a little Saturday job at my dad's friend's shop in Holloway Road, and yeah. I did a couple of days, and obviously I messed it up. I went there, do you get me? I, I, you know what I'm saying? I started taking things from the shop, <laughs> selling them to man them. Then my dad said, listen, do you know what I mean? You can't do that. And then fell out with his friend, and then bam, and then that was it. I said, work ain't for me. Yeah. And then the music thing, and then I just said, you know what, like, I just need to snap. It was, I realised that the people that I was hanging around as well, and that's, looking back at that, and I realised that, nah, that's so important as well. Like, show me your company, I'll tell you who you yeah, are. Yeah, so there's a thing, that I'm, I mean? a th there's a, it's an age-old saying, yeah. our parents have said it to us over yeah. and over again, and it's until you actually yeah. recognise it yeah. that you... You take heat and, and I'm not, deal with I'm not it. taking nothing away from them people because some of them people are good people and just in situations in their life when they need to do certain things. No, it's but not about taking away. Nah. It's just that because remember, it's a your life is a personal journey yeah. with 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 these people and experiences that are around your life. Mm. So it's not taken away from them. Do you know what I mean? It's made you what you are. Well, you know what I mean. I know that. Nah, do you know what I mean? Like even down to to certain things in life, like, it's important, like, it's important that you go through certain things at, at an age where, because, I, you know, like, getting older as well, you can see people going through things at a later stage. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that could not, I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, do you know what I mean, in any way, because obviously we won't, we don't want people to go through things, but you have to, to make you who you are today, like you say. So, for me, like, going through that at a young age, I learned a lot. Um, and yeah, like it, company is important, but music is, is it also works on the good side as well. If you if you hang around with the right people, mm -hmm. they can take you to different mm -hmm. places and different heights as well, and that can rub off you in a positive way. So, yeah. I honestly can say that do you know what I mean. In my life, I've been I've been guided and I've been blessed. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I, and I'd I'd say in, so, in a positive yeah. way, like because you go through certain situations and and and. And you know what I mean? And you look back and you say that that there was there was no coincidence. That's not no, no, that don't was, just yeah. happen like that. Do you know what I mean? You. That's you know what I mean? That's yeah. just like a lesson and you go through certain things and yeah. you touch the fire, you get burnt, then you touch it again mm. and you get you get you get scalded yeah. or whatever, and then until you don't wanna until you don't wanna do it again, yeah, and then yeah. you just say, That's not cool, I'm not happy. Yeah. And life is about trying to be happy, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you can find inner happiness and be happy in mm. life and it ain't always been like that, like we was talking earlier, yeah. do you know what I mean? And mm. You know the, pi the the picture that's painted outside is always yeah. So it looks greener. It's like that. Oh man, they've yeah. got an amazing life, you know. But yeah. we'll get into that yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so here you are now. You know, what I mean, you're learning your craft from like the man there. You get what I mean. You're taking your own inspiration from yeah. like going and seeing people, and you're kind of like left the crime world, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like yeah, petty it was a, crime, dib it was a I mean? dibble and dabble. Yeah, really, like a little me. dibble and dabble yeah, of, the, of, yeah. of, 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 of that. Yeah. And you've kind of recognised, I'm not doing that anymore. You go into music and um, 
And again, I'm Let me just myself. state as well. Let me just state yeah, why we're it, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, just sorry to cut you. When I say crime, like, you got to understand, back then, there weren't no shot in. There weren't no drug dealing. Like, it, it, weren't, it weren't like that. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? It weren't no internet or you're going to see this and see that. It was just but it was just up to no good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand course. what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah, I don't want it, people yeah. to get the wrong... Right, but yeah. trust me, mm. like, and hanging around with people like that, mm. that's up to well, no good. Well, in the end, in the end... In the end, yeah. it would escalate into bigger. It was things. definitely, yeah, yeah. it was definitely crime. But yeah, I'm saying yeah. there was, it come under one bracket. Yeah. Where now people might make money by shotting or doing this or doing that or, do you get what I'm saying? Back then there weren't that option. Yeah, yeah. There was I only do you understand to do good mm. or bad. Yeah, yeah. Do you get yeah, me? Yeah, and we didn't know yeah. about working. We didn't know about mm. that anyway. So yeah. that's like, that's okay, and I think that's fair play to to, yeah. to justify that statement. Yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to now get to the point where. You, you're, you're emceeing now and you've got an idea. This is something that I might be into, you know? Yeah, right? so, I, yeah so funny enough, mm. I went onto the radio station, so mm. the end of the crime spree or whatever you call it, <laughs> led me the into mischief, that, the mischief. Led me into the radio and I'll tell you how it did. Yeah. And it was, it was weird. It was like something happened to me, right? So basically, there was a car on my estate, yeah? And there was a mobile phone in the car. So basically, I look out the window, smash out the window, on my doorstep. Mm. Bear in mind, I live on the ninth floor mm. in a tower block that's 21 floors high. Yeah, my mum can see out the window. Yeah, I've got neighbours, I've got everything. I'm wearing a pink tracksuit, bruv. Mm. A naff naff pink tracksuit. I look out the window, try and impress my friends them, take the phone, bam. So anyway, go, go shot the phone, come back to my yard. When I come back to my yard, my, like I've got to like put my key in the door. I can't get my key in the door, so I knock on the door. PC Simpson at the door. Inside. Inside my yard. Yeah, and he's like, listen, this and that, rear, rear, rear. So basically, he's sitting down with a cup of tea with my mum. Nicked me straight away. Took me to the station. Is he in uniform? Or yeah, he's in it? uniform. <laughs> he's in uniform. He's come looking for me. They know right. who I am. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, someone's seen me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I took the mobile phone and I went to the radio station and I shot it. Yeah. To okay. them man there yeah, okay. to get in the station. Yeah, yeah. So I've gone in the station and remember, I've got like, I probably got 90 quid for it back in the day. Mm. Got that money, but I'm sitting in the studio. I've bought a draw. I'm sitting down. I'm, I'm answering the phone on, on Weekend Rush now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So that's, that's, like a, that's like a new era to me. But when I went home that night, PC Simpson was at my house. Mm. Yeah, and he nicked me. And obviously that was, the, that was a change for me because mm. that was the last time that I got nicked. And I said to my mum, that's it. Like This was after the Epping thing and all that, innit? Mm. So I would have said to my mum, I ain't involved in no more crime. And I've gone and done that. And I've, I've, I've gone back into it. And then that was it. That was the final straw for me. Mm. I got nicked, did my thing. And then I was on the radio because I knew the man them. So I used to basically, from there, instead of me going on the crime thing and all that and being part of it or a lookout or whatever, because I was kind of the smart one, but I thought I was, the man them used to bring the goods and I used to, they used to bring them to me and I used to sell them to the man them. Mm. That's how I started to be the middleman. Mm. So I'm not getting involved in that now and doing all that. But hear what? If you got, I know a man and you know what I'm saying? So I'm the middleman. So. Man are bringing me the things and I'm giving them to them, but I'm getting in the studio. So I'm getting, every time I'm doing that, I'm getting more stripes with the man them. Mm. They're like, yeah, yeah, now you can answer the phone, now you can go shop for the man them. Because mm. <laughs> I remember going in the studio and seeing like 5 0 and all the man them up, cool FM, trust me back in there. And they were, I was like, rah. And man said, go shop for me. I flew to the shop, bruv. Mm. Come back, got all the bits. The next thing, I'm the Sunday man. I used to be up there and I'm like watching the studio and it's a big thing, you don't understand, like... I understand, of course I understand. Back there, yeah, it yeah. was a big thing. It's like that. It's like MTV without the visual. Mm. Like, that's the only way I can say it. Like, MTV, you see all the videos and you see everyone's videos up there. Back then, it was radio was powerful like that. Just, just to get your name bigged up on radio was like, I'm a superstar in school. You don't understand, when I'm going into school, I'm gonna say, boy, they're saying Shabba Burton, you know? I'm saying, yeah, yeah, it's me, it's me, it's me. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. You get what I'm saying to you? And then, like, cause I was Shabba B. Yeah, yeah. Before Shabba D, I was Shabba B. Mm. That's how Miley and the man used to call me, cause the whole Shabba thing, that was the next thing at school, my name was Henna. Mm. My, name weren't, my, my name weren't Shabba, mm. man used to call me Henna. Why Henna? Because, Man got some dodgy, some dodgy ash off some bread, huh? mm. Oh, right. And yeah, I went yeah, into yeah, the yeah. shop and I That's went into the school right, yeah. and I shot it. Yeah, but it was And then henna. everyone, yeah, yeah. yeah, and everyone, it was this funny smell thing. And man yeah, was yeah. like, and then man just labelled me henna. Yeah, yeah. And said henna and then bam, 
two twos, like the Shabba thing come when I went yard. My mum took me yard. I went to Miami, I went to Florida, and then I went to Jamaica for a week, and I come back. With your mum, yeah? Yeah, with my mum. And you were a teenager? Yeah, I was 14. Ah, oh, that's amazing. So like, yeah, yeah. yeah, so my brother was 10 and I was 14, and we went to, we went to Florida, did the whole Disneyland thing, and then we went to, from there to, 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 to Jamaica for a week. Mm. And I went to Jamaica and I went off on my own, run down to the town, got some sand tapes, Stone Love, Black Cat. Bruv, trust me, I was on the sand thing hard. My mum said, don't go out the resort and all that. I flew out there. I come back running. They said they offered me some lady up there and all that when I was in Jamaica. <laughs> come back with my heart panting. <laughs> my mum, but I had a bag of tapes when I come back to England. Like, I had all the fresh tapes, you get me? Like, Kilimanjaro. I was just trading things for them. And mm. yeah, that, that's what level I was yeah, on. Yeah. And then when I come back from there, yeah, that's the whole, the whole music thing just come to come together. I just knew that that's what I wanted that's to do. To do, yeah. do you know what I mean? Um, and get into so, that. So, so you're at, so you're at R Weekend Rush now, and uh, you know, you know where, you know where you're going now. Yeah, well, right? well so, I'm answering the phone, so basically mm. picking up off that. So, yeah, so basically, like they, the trust built up, and then man was going to Nathan Way. There was going to Cedric Street and all that, and I was looking after the studio. And I was clanging through the night. I didn't know about mixing. I used to just put the headphones on and I had to change the channel. And then I would come out the rave, like, you know, all mash up in the morning and that. And I'd be on the radio doing a seven hour marathon. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? On Defection and Weekend Rush. Because obviously I left Weekend Rush and went to Defection because I was more with Miley and Stitchy and them man there and Goldie and all that. Do you know what I mean? That's how I met Goldie and, yeah. and Chemistry and Storm and all that. Because I knew them man for years, yeah. way back. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I was tight with Miley. He was obviously like my, my you know, his mum and my mum and whatever. And my nan was next door neighbour, yeah. so it was like it was like family. So yeah, I stuck to the defection. The Russian defection split. Um, for those that don't know, like they kind of fell out, and then uh, defection went eighty nine four. Weekend Rush was ninety two three because it was originally ninety two five. Um, and then I was kind of caught in the middle of it. Where am I going to go? Cecil and the man have gone that way, and I, I was with Stitchy and Miley and that and. I kind of broke off with the right thing because that man was reinforced and we had beer things guys and Roller Express. So when that man went there, they used to leave me in charge of the studio because yeah. Weekend Rush was mad. Don't get it twisted. Like the radio station, that was like a next era for me because you had like girls coming up the studio. Like you had all 30, 40 people in the studio. It was mad. When I think about it, we still just meet people in the park. Yeah, you want to come studio? And then it, it, it was mad, bruv. Like, I, I can't explain to you. Like, on a Saturday afternoon, the radio, every show, like, one to three, three to, you know what I'm saying? Three to five, five to seven, back down to the big one, Red Ant, you know what I mean? On a Sunday, and it was crazy. And then, like, we had a clash thing. So there was a clash thing going on with Cool and Rush. And we always used to meet down in Nightingale Estate. Um, Eastman used to, Eastman's dad used to own the bakers, mm. you know what I mean? So we used to all meet, but we was all cool friends. But when we got online, it was a rival thing. Mm, mm. Do you know what I mean? So like, I was obviously part of the Rush crew and then Rush split up and went to Defection, obviously. And then like, um, that, that clash thing done, Cool took over, because obviously they was the greatest mm. station, do you know what I mean? Back then they had like, everyone was on there yourself. Mm. And when I joined, like cool back then, like from when I, w I got the, it was like 96, I got my... Oh really, was that late, yeah? yeah? I, got, I, I come on cool late, so right, I stuck to, okay. I went from, from Rush to Defection, from Defection back to Rush, from Rush to Kick FM, mm. and then Kick FM I held out, and then that's when I got on cool right, okay. in 96. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I was a, I was a, I was a loyal man, and mm. I still am, do you get what I'm saying? So I stuck to what I knew, because... Yeah. Like for me, it was like Tottenham Arsenal, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it yeah. was like I'm not, I'm gonna stick, I'm gonna stick mm. my guns. But obviously, as this, you know, Eastman was professional, and back then, Rush was more of a party thing, and man just trying a thing. Mm. But they're all my people I grew up with, so um, yeah, it was kind of like caught in the middle thing. But like, like I said, like I, I held out, but you know, big up Cool FM, man. Like, cause even when I got on there, like that was that was the next part of my career. Do you know what I mean? Um, up until that point. Yeah, I, I knew I wanted to do music and I didn't even think that I'd be getting bookings or anything. But why them, them guys were out and they was raving when I was looking after the studio and then I got familiar with the whole music thing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the tunes and then it was raving. Like, right, like you said, I was a raver. Like, I said, let's go Nathan Way, bruv. Do you know what I mean? With £15 in my pocket and, and no ticket or nothing or no way of getting home. But I used to get in that rave, bruv. And I remember going to... Um, I remember going Life Utopia 
at, 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 um, at Plumstead, Nathan Ware, and I went there and I've gone to the door and it was £15 to get in. Do you know what I mean? And, and everyone's talking about ease and all that and rare, rare, this and that. So I was like, boy, the man, and I never took nothing or never mm. done nothing like that. And I was thinking, boy, I want to do, I want to, I want to take an E tonight, you know. Like I don't know what it was. Mm. Like all the big guys were doing it, and I just thought, yeah, like oh, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in there and try a thing. So mm. I had 15 pounds. So went to the door, and I had a man saying, boy, I can't get in. I look too young. You get me? <laughs> I said, listen, man. He said, give me an extra five pound, you can get in. I said, listen, I already got 15 pounds. You get me? As I've looked round, I've seen the, the defection boys there. Mm -hmm. They've come in, they're like superstars. Mm -hmm. They've got jackets on, mm -hmm. they've got matching jackets on and all that. Yeah. And I'm just looking at the man them, and then they've called me, they're shabba, shabba. Yeah, come man, come, what are you talking about? You're part of the firm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grabbed me with them, got me in, so I got my 15 pounds still, you get me? And um, you know what I mean? I went in there flipping, oh man, took, a, took half a pill. Uh, snowball, I'll never forget it, do you know what I mean? <laughs> right, the thing man mashed me up. Snowballing. Right, the thing mashed me up. I'd have seen my uncle in the rave, because my uncle was a raver. Yeah. Uh, he used to have long hair and that, and he used to properly, was, you know, he was one of them ravers, yeah, you get what yeah. I mean? And I see him and it freaked me out. Uh. Like, the thing just got me, and I had to go in the techno room. You're right, okay. Because Saturn Storm was doing a PA. Right. And you know what I mean, that, you know, that Nicholas Barson tune or whatever it is, yeah? Mm -hmm. I'll never forget it, mashed me up, brother. Mm -hmm. It all, like, teared me up. Mm -hmm. And man, they took me in the techno room, I met a chick, give her my cardigan, I had a chippy cardigan, I give her my cardigan. <laughs> and that was it, my brethren took me home and we went to an after party. Um, when I left the rave, I was like, well, I, I don't even know I'm going to get home. Do you know what I mean? I, I, my mate like, went in his car and he said, come to this place, morning after. I was like, bam, bam, I went to morning after, bruv. It was like, it started at like six in the morning and went on to like one o'clock midday. Do you know what I mean? Uh, man went in there, was, I ended up leaving with a chick, bruv. I just had the night of my life. And then from there, like, yeah, it was just like raving was the thing. Do you know what I mean? Um, I had a couple residential spots where I used to go morning after, thunder and joy, telepathy. Do you know what I mean? And there was like back in the day, that was like the circuit for and, me. And you're how old now? I'm 15. You're 15 years yeah, old. 15. Imagine that. Imagine 15, that. 15, 16, I would yeah, say, yeah, like, yeah. around them times there. And you then, know, there's no 15 or 16 year old uh, MCs on the circuit right now. No, 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 none of that. Yeah, there's that. No, that's not that. No, 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 because like... I was looking up to the man. But when I yeah, first yeah. got in the scene, it yeah. was like, it was people like Hardcore General, bruv. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Easy, MC Easy. And I remember the little VIP course, crew. Yeah, yeah. Right, Stevie I, part MCMC. And Danny, that guy used to roll with them. They used to have a little click. So mm. I, I got into them days. And even like Chalky White. And that was way before. Do you get what I mean? Mm. But um, around the same time, around the same time when I was 16, so I get a call from my dad. Mm. And my dad says to me, um, I've got this link. Because my dad obviously was a tour manager for the Pistols and whatever. So he's like, he knew what I was doing, and he was like, look, I've got, I've got a little coup for you. So I was like, what? He's like, go up the West End. This guy wants you to do a little PA and do some rapping in front of these people, and he's going to pay you £500. So £500 back in the day was like five grand. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? For me, like, um, and I'll never forget, I went up West End, done this little thing. There was all these Japanese people sitting there, and I just done some rapping, you know what I mean? Shabba, for, you know what I mean? Ilford, Stratford, like whatever. <laughs> give them all the areas, it was clapping. And I left there, man, give me five bills cash. Mm. I went straight to the Stone Island shop. I bought a, I bought a two bill outfit, mm. do you know what I mean? I bought a white suit, you get what I'm saying, and a white top and a white bottom is matching. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. I was nice. Mm. You get what I'm saying? When I went back to the hood and that man was like, what, what, what? And I was telling them and there was, anyway, I didn't hear nothing. And then, I think it was when I was 21. Yeah, it was when I was 21. So that, that, that comes after anyway, but I did this PA thing um, and it led to be basically a guy that used to produce for Simple Minds, um, Ray McVeigh. He was like one of dad's uh, good friend and he had a link in Japan and whatever. So I went and done this band thing. Do you know what I mean? But that was later on to come. Like when I was 21, I got a call to say that your tune, what you did for these people, gone platinum in Japan. No way. Yeah, so really? I'm like, I had a whole band thing, so people don't understand that like, I did the band thing as well. I like, didn't even know that. See, <laughs> like I, if you, you can go on YouTube now yeah, and look yeah, at it, yeah. like it's basically, we did a tour of Japan and, and toured like 16 cities. We had a platinum album out there. It's um, incredible. Basically, an artist called Hide passed away. Um, cut a long story short, he was kind of like the Michael Jackson of Japan. Mm. Um, and he, he, he committed suicide when he was 21. He had, mm. he had, he had over 2,000 people working for him. He was like massive over there. They had dolls of him and everything. 
and um, he took his own life and it was devastating. But the guy that was working with him producing his album, they had eight tracks from his album finished and they needed to get another eight to complete the album. <coughs> so they got all these artists from all different genres and that's how I got involved. And at the time they was getting Eminem, they had like Little Kim, Eminem before even blew with Dre and all that. They was getting, they knew this rapper and they was getting him, but he blew up with Dre, so they got someone else. They got Cypress Hill, um, and they got like Little Kim. Then they got like Duffy from Guns N' Roses. They had all these big names in the rock world, mm. and they put this collaboration together. And I ended up doing six tracks on the album. Wow. Do you know what I mean? And it was like I toured for like two, three years with him mm. in Japan and went to LA. Mm. Um, Ice T took me out for my twenty first birthday. Mm, mm, Do you know mm. what I mean? So I was, I was like, wow, like that's going forward. But at the time when I was recording, I didn't know what was going what, on. What, what, how that, what that, what it was going to be. So like basically, yeah. in between that time there now, yeah, obviously, I was just doing like little residential spots and just like you know keeping going. Mm. It wasn't really a money thing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It was just like something I loved doing, and I was getting a little change for it. And I was mm. like, wow, like. You know what I mean? Them that is that if you got fifty quid for a booking or forty quid back then, it was big money. Yeah. And um, you know something, I'm sitting there and I'm listening to you saying about the the jump between the uh, morning after yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because you remember that era, yeah, right? Yeah, Come yeah. Of course on, I do. Yeah, yeah. Of course yeah, I do. Yeah, that was a big error in our well, scene, yeah. man. And I'm and I'm and then it, from then in uh, to this to this period where you're speaking about when you were like 21. Yeah. yeah. And I know that there was a period of time that me and you would speak a little bit, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. when you were just about to become a dad for the first time. Yes. Yeah? So that was it. That was around about the same time, yeah. about 20, yeah. 21. Because I, I had my first son when I was 21. Right, yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, I had Rio when I was 21. And then basically, um, yeah, so like I was doing my MCing thing, but it was, you know, the whole 97... Era, 98, went a bit dark. That's right. Like yeah. the 94 era, I was working at Jungle Splash. Let's go back to that. So I was working at Jungle Splash on, on Kingsham Road and yeah. on um, IB for Records. Mm -hmm. That's when I met Paul and we was doing all that and we had the tune with Junior and, and uh, yeah, we was doing all that Bagley's era and yeah. the Rocket and all that. And then come the 97 era, went a bit dark. Mm -hmm. The music went dark. The vocals got cut out. The, mm -hmm. They put bare uh, ragged vocals in the music in the jungle. The scene split, as you know, mm -hmm. it was like one side is over here, one side is over here. Mm -hmm. And that's when you realise that the jungle was splitting into the DMB and the, and the big interchange of the music. But anyway, it went a bit dark. So for MCs, for me, it was like, is there even a market here anymore? Like, do you get me? Because we was making tunes and all of a sudden got cut out and all these dark noises started coming in and man weren't really feeling it. There weren't no harmonies in the beats. And it was like, what am I going to do? Am I going to get a job? Mm -hmm. Like 97, 98, like literally. And then I went on Cool FM 96, as I said. And then from I got on Cool FM, that was a game changer for me because it was all professional. I went on Jungle Fever Agency from 97. Skibber was already on there. RIP Skibber, he was already on there. Debt and all the man was already on there. They was getting bookings worldwide. And I was kind of like, what am I going to do? And I got my first booking abroad in Germany, went to Ireland as well with Eastman and Mampi Swift and Flirt. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I just started doing all these little, little raves and all that, and I started seeing an angle, you yeah. get what I'm like? It's interesting that uh, history kind of like, I, I think anyway, you know what I mean, history kind of, I don't want to use the word perverts, you know what I mean, but it kind of like shapes it wrong sometimes, and it's like yeah. good having these conversations. Yeah, because yeah. listen to what you're saying, Skibber was already there with debt, yeah. and, and then you came along, you hadn't even started yet, nah. properly. Yeah, nah. history. I've been MCing longer than both of them. Yeah, by yeah, the but way. this is the point but I'm saying. Yeah, they was, yeah, they this, was is over the there. this is the point I'm making. Yeah, it's yeah. like saying that it's that history would have it that oh they're all there together. Yeah, but it yeah. wasn't like that. Do no, you know what no, I mean? No, no, it, no, but no. but when you look, at, it only yeah. takes a few more years for yeah. it to look like that. Yeah, yeah. And if yeah. you weren't there uh, yeah. in those few more yeah, years, exactly. you just believe that this yeah. is what it was like. This is what it was like. So I I didn't meet them, man, because obviously. I, you didn't I even met, know them. Yeah, I didn't even know them. I met oh. I met Skibs through Shocking on oh. when we was on Rush. Yeah. See, when I was on Rush, yeah, and Rush went to Kick because mm. obviously the management changed and Kick Sorry, FM. Sorry, I, I, I interrupted you, but I just wanted to share. No, that that's bit. fine. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. So it was like because we're recapping, we're going back, we're yeah, going yeah, forward, yeah. but it's around the same era. Yeah, of course. So yeah. obviously through that's when I met Shocking. Um, I, like we started this, you know, I, I started linking Shocking, and he was very musical. Like I walked in the studio at Broad Broad. 
Broadway market mm. and shocking would come through the show and I was like, bruv, I've been listening to you for like three, four months because I used to listen to all the shows. Mm. Come back in the morning, do shows in the morning. Radio was mad, do you know what I mean? And I say, here, this shocking MC, who's this guy? I want to see this guy. So I went up there, p- p- you know, purposely to bump into him and mm. he left the studio as I got there and mm. I bucked him in the the little block thing. And I was like, yeah, yeah, Shabs, yeah, yeah. I was like, bruv, like, you're sick, man. I'm leaving your floats. He's like, I, I, he goes, obviously, I've been listening to you as well. He said, we should link up and do a little show or something. Mm. And I was like, yeah, give me your number or whatever. Boom, got his number. Then I linked him up higher breeze. Brother was well musical day, this hip hop thing going on. So I was, I was linking shocks, going up there, bunning weed. And just vibes and it was a good vibe, man. Good energy, man. Do you know what I mean? Big up shocking mm. every time. Um, and then we started this SAS thing. Mm. So it was me and Shocking that started the SAS thing. And then obviously that's how I met Skibar through Shocking. Um, and then it become SASASAS back then. Mm, mm. Do you know what I mean? So that's another era. And then, yeah, around about the same time, I got, I got this call from, from my old man to say, yeah, like, obviously this tune's gone big in Japan. And I was still doing my MCing thing, just mm, getting by, mm, mm. doing little raves here and there. But it wasn't like mad income or whatever. Do you get what I mean? But it was all right. Like, mm, I loved mm. it. I didn't... Do you know what I mean? I didn't have no worries. I was living at home at my mum's and I was corn cool. and then I kind of moved out my mum's. Um, and to be, to be honest, I moved out when I was 16, 17 I got a hostel. Right, okay. And my dad told me about the coup and go up North London, register in North London. That's what I did. Mm. I registered in North London and I ended up getting my flat around that time there when I was about 20. Mm-hmm. The same one that I own. Same one, one. Yeah, same yeah, one, yeah, same yeah, one. Yeah, I still, yeah. you know what I mean? I still own mm, that. Mm, mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, you know what I mean? That was a big thing. And then I got the call from my dad to say, obviously, you need, like, I've just had my son Rio, and then basically um, I got a call to say, yeah, bring your family to Malta. You have mm. to do some recording because you're going to be going to LA in a couple months. I'm mm. like, what? Mm. LA? <laughs> like, obviously, as a man, I was like, what? I, I've never been to America. I've been with my mum and that, but I've never been out there. As an entertainer. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, listen, yeah. I want to go. I can't, you know what I mean? This is going to be crazy. So it was all happening, and yeah, I got the call, went out, went out to Malta, recorded, and then I said to them, I've just had my baby, I can't bring my son, he's three months old, like, mm. I can't leave my family. And then it was, it was like, bring them. Mm. Flew them all out there, stayed in one, like, flipping castle, bruv, mm. had, had like a house, a guest house next to it. Stayed in there, it was recorded for two weeks, ended up doing eight tracks on the new album. Mm. Um, and he took all snippets and done all bits, and literally, I thought it was just, like, to record one track or two tracks, but... He ended up here in... That sounds like a really nice experience yeah. to be going through, considering you just had a child. Yeah. Your aspirations to be, like, an MC. You've done this thing. This thing's now come out of yeah. the blue. Out and the now, they've like, you know something? We're going to yeah. fly the whole of your flam- family yeah. to, to Malta yeah. because, because we need to get this done because we're going to LA. Yeah. I'd imagine that that really gave you a feeling that you were in the music business. Oh, yeah, like, like yeah, to yeah. be And honest, your family as well. Yeah, of course, like, yeah, yeah. like to me, like, even to, so my, that's the music to business, my partner yeah. at the time, it was a joke thing. It weren't really. I was working, I was putting food on the table, but was it going to be a consistent job? Was it going to be, I'm not a nine-to-five worker, I'm mm. not a builder, I'm not a carpenter, I'm not a painter. I don't know, I ain't got no trades, but mm. do you know what? This is what I'm doing, and right now it's working. I'm, I'm flying out, I'm bringing back money. Do you know what I mean? I can't believe it. I'm just grateful. I'm happy. But like I'm on, like you said, that feeling, you can't explain it. When you get them opportunities there, like... So anyway, I went out there, did my thing, took my family with me. I didn't know what was going to go on. I didn't know if I'd done good. I didn't know anything. All I knew that I was just going, I was on this mission. And I went and got called straight away. Two weeks later, boy, they're loving it. Like, I've actually used more of your tracks now. Like, we've pieced you in. Oh, uh, this is going to be next level. Like, when we do this live, it's going to be like, I'm just, he's already selling me the picture. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, like, I went to L.A. I went to L.A. On my, when I was 21. Like, so I was 20 at the time. And then I went to L.A. on my 21st birthday. I was out there mm. for May. I mm. um, was recording four doors away from Rod Stewart in, like, the top <laughs> studios. I had, I met Ice-T. Mm. I met mm. the whole of Cypress Hill. Mm. Uh, B-Real took me out on my birthday. Mm. And Mellow Man Ace mm. and um, Send Dog. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, I even hit him up the other day as well and just mm. gave him a little message on, on Instagram, you know what mm, I mean? Mm, because mm. for me, that was a big thing. I'm not a hip-hop man, I'm a reggae man, but when I, I, was, I just see a different world. I see people just on a next level. I just see, like, everyone just get... Like, this America thing was an eye-opener for me. It was like going into the real world, like, wow, this is mad. Like, yeah, I think, um, again, this got, uh, going back to what we spoke about a bit earlier when we were saying, when I said to you about your mum taking you to those places when yeah. you were young, your dad taking you to those places when you were young. Coming from the backgrounds that we came from, yeah. going to 
it's particularly in America, once yeah. you're in the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Going to America, once you're in the industry, in the 90s, yeah, yeah. it was completely different to, totally to, different. to what it is in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. They're a bit on the par now, not necessarily yeah. on the money yeah, side, yeah, yeah, yeah. but certainly inside yeah. the industry, yeah, yeah. they were like chalk and cheese back in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, of course. You go to course. an American That's record label yeah, yeah. in back in the day, you see brothers up there with a the clipboard, yeah. and it, yo, man, what's up? And yeah, they're yeah, in charge. They're in charge, bro. They're in charge, and yeah. so it inspires you to yeah. go, yo, I, I could be yeah. that person. But so yeah, I, I, shot, I, shot, I shot a video in LA, basically I had a tune called Charlie's Children, so mm. they made a tune, because obviously the rock and the, that music was very satanic, it was very like that devilly, mm. like, I didn't understand it, you get, the energy was close to drum and bass jungle, because mm -hmm. it was mad energy, but the music was very dark and it was very like, do you know what I mean? You had people cutting themselves on stage and all that. And it, it, in, their, in their world, yeah, it's yeah. like normal. Yeah, it's yeah. like smash up equipment, ah, let's go mad. Like, yeah. It was the punk thing yeah, as well, yeah, like yeah, the rock yeah. thing as well, it was mad. So I was just learning about it. Um, so I had a tune, I had a number one tune. You can even go on the internet and see this video, like mm. um, Charlie's Children. Basically they made it out after Charles Manson, the, mm. the mad yeah, psychopath the guy, yeah, murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They made this tune about him. And we'd done it in LA. It was like a $1.2 uh, million dollar video no at way. the time. Yeah, right, it was yeah. shot in the hills in Hollywood. Mm. And it was like, went there three days recording, all proper, like, you know what I mean? Like, to rehearse seven days a week for, for this band. It was mm. no joke. It wasn't going over there to just sit back and act like a superstar. Mm. Like, I had to work. Yeah. I'd learned about recording. If I make a mistake with a vocal, the whole, everything just goes off with a band mm. and all that. Anyway, we did this video. And um, at the time of my life over there, I just stayed in LA for an extra two weeks. I was staying on Venice Beach um, and I loved it, man. I loved it. I didn't want to come home. Only from my family and that, obviously. Um, but I just loved it and I see an experience. Anyway, we did this video and then we was going on tour. They said we're doing this massive tour of Japan. Mm. And at the same time, I'm still doing my MC bookings. I'm still doing my little Shabba bookings. I'm trying to juggle. I was away for three months, um, all in all, do you know what I mean? Like at one point, um, just going back and forth from LA to Japan. We did a, a tour called the Firewire Tour. You can check mm. that out on YouTube. Um, they had WWF wrestlers there. Mm. So it was a massive thing. It was uh, Avex and Sony that put it on. Um, and like, yeah, I had, I had connections out there, obviously through my dad and they loved me, man. They just, they kind of wanted to sign me up to be this punk guy. Like they was trying to change me, innit? They was, make, they was dressing me up, putting all makeup on me and shit like that. And like, looking back at it, like, I was very protective over my image as well. Like I was like, oh, I don't like that, man. I can't mm. be wearing that shit. And nah, I just, I just want to be me. Mm. So I ended up being popular in the group where I was doing an intro, a little rap intro for all the concerts because it was sell out concerts, bruv. Like they put like $7 million into this project and they was hoping to get like 50 million back. Mm. But it only got, it, it made its money back. It made like 10 or 20 million, but they still lost out on this whole Firewire tour thing. But it was massive, bro. 60,000 people, Tokyo Dome, mm. sold out, like the energy like that. Mm -hmm. Like, it was crazy. And, and like, it, it was good, but I kind of got popular and I said, look, I want to be, I want to be me. So I was coming out in a white suit, I had some machine gun thing. Like mm -hmm. I was dark glasses, like I wanted to be me. Mm -hmm. They put me in the video and they, they dressed me up, you know, God save the queen things and <laughs> all funny hair and makeup on my face. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't sit, 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 mm -hmm. sit with me well. Um, but I loved it. I loved being there and I was the youngest member in the group. I was 21 and the, the next youngest member was like 45. Mm. So they was all head yeah. to toe in tattoos. They was all rock stars. Mm. They'd been through shit. Multi-millionaires, the mm. whole band. The whole mm -hmm. band was like set up there, you know, houses in Hollywood. And I was just a youth. Mm. I was just around them. But anyway, I see some real dark shit over there in Japan. I see some real, real, real dark shit, man. I was over there, I got really homesick. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna lie, I don't eat fish. And like, I, was, I was struggling with living over there, the food at first, it was good. But then when I was there for such a long time, I was getting really homesick, I was missing home. Um, and there was too much shit going on. Like the band was just on some, uh, you know, rock and roll, sex, drugs thing. Like it was mad, bro. Like I see so much shit over there. And I was like, this ain't for me, man. I said like, it's too dark, man. Like satanic and, all this Satan shit was coming out and I was like, this ain't that, you know what I mean? It's too much for me, but mm. it was a good energy and I realised it was just the music. These people are normal people, but they was living that life, innit? Like, mm. they was living that rock star life, do you know what I mean? And I was around that at a young age and I see that and I thought, right, like, so anyway, I just kind of just carried on doing the band and 
there was then they started to fly me first class and shit like that because I was like, listen, I'm getting bookings in England now. People are booking Shabba now, like, mm. so like you have to come correct. Like, I was getting good money in that, but it was only for live performances, um, and yeah, back then and I was just like the experience was great, but it kind of come to the stage where I had to make a decision. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because I had a career in and England. What year we're we talking here? Uh, 2003. Really? 2002. Right. That's yeah. Interesting. That's 2002, interesting. 2003. Because yeah. it was just before I started MC Convention. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So mm. like basically we. I was still doing the band and I was on tour with them. It might, exactly, it might have been 2001, to be fair, yeah. because that's when I started um, Convention 2003. But yeah, I mean, I had to make a decision what I'm gonna do. Their Sony wanted to sign me. Mm. They wanted to give me a, a, an album deal, mm. just a solo deal out there to do my thing. Do you know what I mean? Because I was popular. They made, they made little dolls of me and everything, bro. Like, I, was, mm. I was mad popular. When I went to the airport, I had fans tracking me down from Japan, knowing when I'm coming in. And like I've had two or three, I swear on my life, I had two or three hundred people at the airport. Ah, shabba, shabba, shabba. Mad, bruv. Mm, like mm, everywhere mm. I went out there. Because I, I was on the billboards, innit? Like, yeah, yeah, like if you go that. on, you can yeah. check out the band Zilch, 321 Zilch. Um, so basically, like, yeah, it was massive. They, like I said, they, they spent like seven million dollars. So they had like campaigns Like when you went to Japan, they had our video playing in Tokyo. Yeah, on the all screens. All day long yeah, on yeah, the screens yeah. and everything. So. Mm. It was massive because they had uh, Japanese me band members as well. Okay, yeah. That was massive. And Hide, like I said, he was like Michael Jackson over there. Mm -hmm. So it was the whole thing was under the umbrella. And it was deep. Like we, we had his funeral, I think over 20,000 people attended to his funeral. Right. And he had like, um, we met his family when we went over there. They took us to his grave and all that. Like it was mm -hmm. deep, bro. Like, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? A lot of people was upset and heartbroken around mm -hmm. the tour. The fans were bursting into tears yeah. at, at the thing because they was playing Hide songs and that. It was deep, bruv, like mm. the whole experience. Anyway, yeah, I had to make a decision what I'm going to do. And like, I kind of just made the decision that I want to do this MC thing, man. I, mm. I just believed in this jungle thing. I don't know what it was. It was something that I enjoyed doing. I could see things taking off a little bit for me. Do you know what I mean? Like well, I was getting bookings in Canada and I was going to the States on my own. I had the opportunity to go to the States on my own and do bookings, which I did. I went there like maybe seven to 10 times on my own without a DJ to go to America okay, on my own, right, do you know what I mean? And tour on my own with, yeah. like, with just local DJs, mm. do you know what I mean? So I was getting popular back then, do you know what I mean? I want to go back a little bit, yeah? yeah. Um, if it is back, actually, because you, you, you go to um, LA, you go to uh, Malta yeah. with the family. Yeah. You just had a, a baby. Yeah. You, you, then you go to LA, you have yeah. that experience in, in, in LA. And now it's kind of like, it's turning into like, it's growing into this sort of, um, yeah. into something, you know? Yeah. And then you're recognizing, nah, you know something, it's, it, I like it, but there's something about it that doesn't suit me and yeah. that. So you, you, you make a decision, you come back, yeah? But you're still a young father at that time. Of course. Do you get what I mean? Of course. And, and Tom, go walk me through like what that was for you, like for you, kind of like navigating. Like I was, I, I was in my thirties when I became a dad. Do you know what I mean? So I'd yeah. already had a lot of life experience. Yeah. And even then, even then, I was still in the rave yeah. scene. Yeah. It do you was, know what I mean? It was and tough. it was a challenge. Yeah. yeah. It was tough. It was tough. Like, you know what I mean? Look, one good thing is that I feel like I've been blessed to the fact where I had this career. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Where I, I'm not gonna lie, like there was times that my partner was telling me that this ain't a career. You have to go and get a job. This is not. This is not. This is not what you're gonna do. Like mm. it's, it's gonna. It's nothing's gonna happen. Like it ain't a real job. Do you know what I mean? And I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't register that. Mm. I was just like, well, I'm traveling every week. I'm getting paid. I love it. I'm getting more popular. Um, and then I just I stuck to it. And being a dad was obviously settling down at a young age and trying to do that at a young age. That's why I feel like my life's been a little bit like that along the way because there's been times where I settled down at a young age. I was in an 18-year-old long relationship with my partner. So it's 18, 18 years, years, do you know really? what I mean? Wow. So, like, like, so basically that's like from when you go primary school down to like two years past, you go secondary school. That's a long term. That's a long term Do you understand? So like basically okay, I was yeah. married at a young age. Like I wasn't married like really, but it was like being married. Of course. I had a family yeah, yeah. unit and whatever. Mm. And obviously we moved on and, and we've parted our way or whatever. And my kids have grown up. Um, but yeah, I mean, at back then it was kind of tough because all my friends were doing other shit as well. And then if I did shit, I'll just end up just, you know, falling out or, or it would be like that. But, you know, like I went through, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, yeah, I'm perfect. And I, I had the perfect life and the perfect. It was tough, man. 
Like I was, I was, you know what I mean? I was still growing up. I was I had to make mistakes. I had to do all that, all that shit there, do you know what I mean? Um, and then I had this whole, this, this MC bubble thing. And then I had the music, I had the Japan thing. And I was like, right, there's going to be opportunities coming like this. Then things are going to happen. I can feel things happening. My dad obviously was doing anything he can to help me and push me as well, like, in that world and saying like, you know what I mean? This is where like, cause I realized it was like boys to men, innit? When I went to um, LA and was around all these rock stars and recording artists and, and doing rehearsals and writing lyrics. And I thought, this is the world, man. This is the music business now. Mm. This ain't no joke. Cause mm. while I'm in, in England, it's cool. And it's a little jungle rave or it's a little this and that, but, and it's the start of it. Do you get what I mean? But over here, shit's progressing. Like man, are asking me about questions I don't even know about PRS, about publishing. I don't even know, what's all that? Do you know what I mean? Like, you got to do this and do that. So really, I should have learned the music business from years, but I had to make mistakes in it. Yeah, yeah. And then and do things for myself, and that's yeah. the truth. Like, where, they said, what's the mistakes you made? It was a lessons, really, not mm. mistakes. Because mm. I just learned a lot, and, and now, like, I suppose the professional, the attitude of the people I was around rubbed off on me into the fact where yeah, like it's helped me along my way loads. Yeah, I'd say so because, because what I, you touched on it a bit earlier and I, I remember there was a period of time when you started to, um, where I started to see you putting on events and stuff. Yeah. And, and for me, I hadn't seen you for a while. And then when I saw you and you were speaking about it, yeah. I could tell it was like you were driven. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It was like a different Shabba that I yeah. saw. You get what I mean? Yeah. It was like, it's like you had a bit between your teeth of, of like going, yeah, you know what I mean? You know, I'm going to do this thing because, you know, like I just can't depend on one thing. Yeah. And you know yeah. what I mean, Ron? You know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, I've got to do this and da da da. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then you went on to do some successful words. And I, 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 I'll say this now before we get anywhere near the end of the conversation is that we probably won't get into your whole career. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 and whatever, yeah. Because I think there's plenty of. More, yeah. Uh, there's plenty of opportunity stuff, for people yeah. to look and see that yeah, out the there. the history's out there. Do you get I mean, what I mean? There's a long part of the history that is not yeah. before the internet. Yeah. And that's what I want to get things like, this is why I do things like this as well. Yeah, because yeah. Because for me, even though I've done my documentary the other day, you know, you can check out that as well. Like, there's other stuff on there about my career and what I'm doing now, up to date as well. But um, one thing about the whole music thing as well, it's like, it's just so weird, man. It's just so weird the way it comes together and everything happens and you look back at things at a later stage, do you know what I mean? And say, right, that happened then and look at that. And it was all, so opportunities, um, I'm, I have to say, like, I'm always grateful for them opportunities, do you know what I mean? And, and, and things do take its toll after years. Like you learn, it's mm. a learning game and it's not a game, you can't complete it. Mm, mm. You cannot complete it. That's the thing about music. It's like, you're always nonstop learning. Yeah. I forgot where it was at there for a minute. No, no, no. I was just saying about the fact of, um, uh, first, we were speaking, obviously, about your growing up and navigating being an entertainer, a young man and a father. Yeah, and yeah. you were like quite open saying like, you know, it wasn't easy. You know what I mean? You know, no. like, especially when you have a, especially when around you, the closest people around you are saying like, this is, you know. Yeah, you know what I mean? You yeah. know, like, you know, like, I'd imagine that it was like doubt for you sometimes, yeah. like thinking maybe they're right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe, maybe they're right. Um, and then another time you're like, well, no, I'm actually, I'm doing stuff. Here's, yeah. here's the tangible proof yeah. that I'm doing stuff. I mean, when you said I come back from Japan and then I had this, this, this different thing about being someone and doing things. And that's when I got into the promoting and things like that. And, um, and I had a thing like, cause obviously I, I kind of, I, I had a circle of friends, promoters that looked out for me and they was, they was the masters in their field. Mm -hmm. So obviously knowing them well and, and, and then I was like, oh, let's do a little thing. And then all of a sudden it, it goes well. And then this man, I'm working with that man. And it's like a ladder. Mm -hmm. That's why the music I'm going back to, it's like a ladder. You, you can't complete, it's not a game. You don't, you know, you can't go to 34 levels and then you completed it. You just keep learning yeah, every just, day. Yeah, yeah, Even it, now it, I'm learning it, it every day evolves. about yeah, things. Yeah, it just evolves and you then, evolve yeah. and you learn mm. and you learn things. And maybe they're different shapes and sizes and it's the same format or the same things in different formats mm. over the years, but you never stop learning. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I got into the promoting thing and I started, you know, the whole, started working with telepathy at first, mm. um, doing like, you know, like these telepathy bashes. I did my 10 year anniversary with them at Waterton Road and that was ram, sold out two and a half thousand. And I was like, from there, 
started doing ministry, then the lighthouse, then, you know, then the whole thing about going to Iron Napa. You was out there, you mm -hmm. come out at Napa, mm -hmm. um, the whole convention. That was, I think you was there the, the time that we actually had the conversation on the beach and, and, and come up with the idea, this thing that I want to do, this MC thing, man. And just, and why, why can't we have an MC rave, do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, obviously coming from my history of the whole um, reggae thing and the live stage show and that's probably like where it led to. I was like, yeah, I want to do my own events. I want to put on these things and make a name for the MCs because at the time, as you know, like it's funny the music that was like kind of chopping out the MCs a little bit. Um, yeah, it was I mean, more, it's always been about the music and I get that, but I mean, the MCs were getting popular, was getting mad rewinds and mad love in the raves and then it was a time where I think it was just, it may be not, nothing to do with the MC, it was just how the music was going and it was like the vocals were cutting us out and it was all that shit going on. So we, we was just like, well, what are we going to do here? Do you know what I mean? We was in a bit of a ruck. Um, and then, yeah, we come up with the whole MC convention thing and that the rest is history, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I think, I think that was kind of very, uh, uh, it was like the, almost like a, a tipping point then, you know what I mean, Be uh, the MC convention because because I do remember, not just from the MC convention, I've, many years later, mm. this is now, yeah. years later, yeah, I was somewhere, I think it was you, I think it was you, you know what I mean? Like, so somebody was DJing, yeah. right? Someone's DJing, they're DJing and the crowd is there, yeah. yeah? And they're raving and this, that and the other. And I think you came on and you done some lyrics or something and the response with the crowd, yeah. I, sa I said, things have changed now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked yeah. at the response at that time. I must have been, I don't know, maybe, you know, like, it's not a secret. No, been, no, no. I've not been away for it. Because you've been in and out the scene Exactly. As well. And yeah. when I came back and I saw that, mm. and I saw that, I remember you had like a, it was winter, you had a big coat on, you hadn't even got into the rave properly. Yeah. You get what I mean? And you got on the stage and I thought, you know what? And how that happened, I was like, mm. this is now, if if not on a level par, the MCs are now yeah. certainly not not insignificant anymore. Yeah, they are significant yeah. part of yeah. what the crowd want to see and hear. Of now. course, yeah. of course, because we we kind of change the dynamic. And I think that MC, my point is, I think that MC convention helped that. Of course. Yeah, was a, was a was beginning a big part, catalyst of, course, of, of that. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. I mean, like yeah. I have to big up people like Navi. Um, and they had like the run it red dance and all that. He had he had his thing going on. Do you know mm. what I mean? Don't get me wrong. People's putting on dances, but. Um, we did it on the next level, like where we was putting the MCs out there, and I think that at the time as well, like um, the whole dynamics of the game, we like, I was part of changing that as well. Like if they said, if you said to me, I said to you, look, MC sets an hour, right? Back then there was two hours, three hours. Yeah, we straight away we put a stop to that. It was like we ain't gonna do two hour sets anymore because mm. we're getting two. How are we gonna do two gigs in one night? Mm. Why well, are we gonna do this? Because that weren't heard of before. That was like you're you're at one place yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're here, yeah, yeah. and there ain't no two waves going all at once. Like there might be things up north and that, but they ain't even connected to yeah. London at that time. But we just kind of just said, look, I was looking at the grime man and the dizzies and the, and them man there. Even though they learnt from us, we why why can't we learn back from them? Mm -hmm. They was going in raves and doing fifteen minute PA's, mm -hmm. twenty minute PA's and cleaning up. Mm -hmm. So we was like, rah, like why why can't we do an hour? So we from the convention thing, we said, look, bump, we're only gonna do hour sets, mm -hmm. and that's where it come into play. Yeah. And again, this I mean, this is a that is a historical moment. Yeah. It's a game changing moment in the history of, of our course. scene. Of course, don't even know. We and don't, people don't know. I'm not shouting and screaming. Oh yeah, we did this yeah, and we yeah, did that, yeah, but yeah. it just happened, man. Yeah, yeah, it happened. Like, and like, that, I mean, and that commendable. And I mean, it's a lot of people who sit down like, rah. Do you know what I mean? I did. I didn't know that. Do you know what I mean? I didn't know that. And. And you have, in all of the years that I've known these yeah, people, yeah. including that, I wouldn't yeah. have known it. Yeah, I mean, it, because like, it's a it's a case of having the humility to not go around shouting it from the rooftops. Do you yeah, get what I, I mean, mean, I mean, there's 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 so much things along the way that's, that's that we've done to 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 curve this to MC mm. thing, and that's why I sit here and and no matter what happens, you know mm. what I mean, I sit here and I'm I smile, mm. I smile from inside because I'm proud of. The whole, the way everything's gone, all these new MCs that are coming through and all this scene they've got now, mm. like, you know what I mean, who's there, you know what I mean, shoveling, chipping yeah, away yeah, and yeah, doing all yeah, this. And yeah. people understand that. There is people that do know, because, like, coming up to 33 years now I've been in this game. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I think to have longevity in it as well, you you must, you know, it's not a fluke. Do you no, get what I'm saying? Thing, like, no, no. You, to be able to be current as well, and always have that foot in that door. Mm. Cause me, like I get the blessing of doing both. I do jungle, I do DMB, 
I'm, I'm a recording artist as well, mm. do you know what I mean? So it's like, I do a little bit of everything, promoting, mm. Um, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I have to do, like you said back then. I've had that always had that mentality. Yeah. Don't just rely on one basket. Mm -hmm. You know, put your eggs about. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you because even now that's helped me so much. Mm. You know, that's a good segue with what you said. You know, like jumping from uh, where we were speaking about before with MC Convention, which was so many years ago, and everything in between that time. Because you brought us in a way full yeah. circle to where we yeah, are now, yeah, which yeah. is like, you know, because. I didn't really want you to come on here and speak about your uh, career as yeah, such yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. because there's, again, there's so many examples of yeah, that out yeah, there. Yeah, you yeah, get what course. I mean? You can, go and, you can go and read up on that. Yeah, you know what I mean? mean and, and, but, but what I am very interested in now in your latter life, yeah? yeah. Um, you know, like you're, you're an adult now. You're a grown man. You're a big man. Yeah. No matter that you're where you started at 15, yeah. um, MCing, the age is not a thing. It's more your character and like, yeah. and I've learned very recently as well yeah. that now you've kind of like become more sort of like settled in your yeah. life. Do you get what yeah. I mean? In your work life, yeah. in your personal life and, and in the things that you do. And I don't know if you wanted to kind of like share some of those experiences, particularly the the downtime that you have. You get what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. like a lot of people, they know, do you know what I mean? It's not a secret for that. Uh, that. Look, I'm going to say it as it is. Yeah. When I started doing yoga, yeah. man was looking at me saying, he ain't going to keep that up. Yeah. Or he's only doing it for the yeah, gram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, who's, and, he, yeah, yeah. who's he trying to impress? Ron, yeah. Is, Ron, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Ron's from the ends. I know where Ron's from. And then what happens is that those same men yeah. are calling me on a D-Lo like, yo, you know that I was thinking about coming with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about coming with you. And, and yeah. I know that, that although you don't really take up yoga and stuff like that, 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 <coughs> There is a deeper level to you now. And I just wondered yeah, if there I was mean, anything I mean, you wanted to share with that. Yeah, I mean, we were, I, I touched on it brief earlier. I think um, me personally, around five years ago, um, I wouldn't even say before that I was living bad or I was doing anything, you know what I mean? But I've been going through stages in my life where I realised now, looking back, that I was unsettled. I weren't, I weren't really happy. I was happy in what I was doing, but I weren't happy with my progress. I weren't happy with myself. You know, in certain ways, like I said, like in the front line, everything's happy and, and, and a rosy picture. Do you know what I mean? In the background, I was lonely. You know what I mean? It was dark times where I had to find myself, I had to make decisions, I had to fight my demons. Um, do you know what I mean? So-called be it. But I went kind of on, because I've been kind of like up and down when I say that, but then I've been stable. And then there was a period of two years where I lost my nan and I lost storming, Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean? And around the same time, and I got ill as well. I got ill, I was in hospital, um, I had some lung problems, do you know what I mean? And I was like, it was a bad time for me. I wasn't looking after myself, I went back to partying, I was drinking loads, like, and I don't even drink. Mm. And I was just like, what, what, what am I doing? Do you know what I mean? Like, like, but I didn't think about it at the time, making money, going flying the world, partying, doing what I want. I actually broke up. I was single as well, so I was like, I was just like going back to I was 21 again, bruv, like thinking that I could just do what I wanted to do, even though at 21 I weren't doing that. So maybe it was a reflection of me holding back and just thinking I missed out on time and I just want to do what I want to do, but it weren't doing me no good and I was stressed out and I was looking ill and I, I weren't looking after myself, do you know what I mean? I was just, it was more just a stress of thinking that I, what am I going to do? Like, um, I should have this or I should be doing that. and. It's, I, I know now that it's responsibility because once you've got responsibility and you make certain decisions, back then you didn't have the responsibilities you had, so it was more freelance to do it or it wouldn't, you know, you didn't affect as many things, you know what I mean, in your life and yourself as a person. But I suppose having responsibilities and becoming a man and then going back to that is very scary. So I had a, a year of my life where it was a bit mad. Like I had to go through that stage of my life and then I looked at myself and I said, one day I said, oh, I can't do this no more, man. I've got to just, I'm, I'm changing, man. Mm. I was 40, you know what I mean? I was coming up to 40 and I'm like, listen, mate, I've got to make decisions in my life. Mm. My dad was living with me at the time in, in my flat and I just looked and I said, listen, I'm, I'm better than this, man. Mm. I'm better than this. I can make some real, real changes in my life and... I can do it, I know I can, it's mind over matter. This is, this, I ain't talking about drugs, I ain't talking about partying, drinking, I'm just talking about the way I feel inside. Like, I weren't feeling good, I weren't looking good, do you know what I mean? But I'm in this massive role, you get me? But I lost people in my life, I went through mad shit, 
Um, and I remember looking at myself one day in the mirror and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm, when I, I was going to Thailand. And when I went to Thailand, I said, when I come back from Thailand, I'm making some big changes in my life. And I ain't looked back, bro. I ain't looked back. I've been on a journey since then. The whole lockdown thing was a big changer for me. Um, you know, the first time in my life where I couldn't have what I wanted. I couldn't make what I wanted. Um, do you know what I mean? It was a mad time of all I've ever done is music. And then I had that taken away from me. So I was like, rah, reality check. What am I going to do? Everyone in music is stressed out. Like, I need to do something. And that's when I, I started going back, doing things what I loved when I was a kid, like fishing. And, and then I thought, rah, I can, make some, I can do something with this fishing thing. Do you know what I mean? And that got me through the lockdown thing. Started up a fishing business. Um, being around the fisher, fishing world was buzzing. Everyone was good, energy was good. <laughs> but in the music, I was everyone come was. There, I? Yeah, every, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> everyone was just depressed and there's no work, there's no money. But I was like, right, let's appreciate life. Like, I'm in the green space, I'm catching fish. Mm. Like, then I'm making a little money, I'm bringing people to the lakes. Like, it was crazy. Like, I'm still doing that. And it's, mm. it's mad. Like, it's, something's come out of that. Like, it's not mm. just forgot about it. I've had to pull it on hold for a year, but we've got some big plans with that. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, and um, yeah, I mean, then I was been on a journey, like looking after myself, you know, like obviously like where I haven't done in the past so much. Um, I met a lovely lady, obviously married, do you know what I mean? Settled down, happy. She's been through so much madness in her life as well, where she's gone through a relationship that ain't worked. Same with me. And we come together and we just like, it was just like a bonding. And like we made the decisions personally each that, that we're going to better our lives anyway. Not that her life weren't good or my life weren't good, but coming together and doing it and having that someone that you can put that trust into and 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 like a team, do you know what I mean? Like a team. So like that's that's well, that's a benefit, do you know what I mean? Like we can both do that together. Um, but I was doing it for myself as well, and she was doing it for herself. So together, um, it was a tough time because when I met her, like we was both in situations and we had to hide from the world for for eight eight to nine months and. We talked a lot, that's what we did. We talked and we, she helped me because there was a lot of trap stuff in and I felt like I had to put everything on the table and she felt that way as well. And that's what we did. We put everything down on the table and I told her everything about my life, you get me, with that. That's beautiful. Yeah. And, um, and like, we've just been like, it's just been just so good, man. Like, mm. like it's, been, it's been a blessing and like every day we work on our relationship and I work on my happiness and trust me, there's days I, I'm a human being, like there's days I'm, I get upset, I get pissed off, whatever, but mm. I don't, I deal with things in a different way mm. now. I've been on this, 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 this healing program, like this, this Reiki universe thing, do you know what I mean? Um, gong baths, like things, there's things out there that can help you, man. Um, and these things really helped me, man. And like released a lot of stuff that I was holding in I found out like you can go to the gym, you can do exercise, you can do all these things, but it doesn't fill up your cup to the fullest. There's other things that you can do because your body's made of water, 70% um, water, so it's unbalanced most of the time. And when there's full moons and things like that, crazy shit happens. And then you start putting two and two together and thinking, right, that happened there. Like you see blessings out of it, innit? And when it works for you as a person, you don't care what people say to you because you're seeing the benefit and you're feeling the benefit. Like we was talking earlier, I'm not gonna convince no one that what I'm doing is 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 like some special thing, but it's work for me in my life, um, and it's and it's work for my missus. And then there's people that we've met in the community that these sort of things have actually like it's like it's like it's like miracles, mate. Like like this Reiki stuff and that it's really good for your mental health, your mind, and your mind's a powerful tool. Mm. So that's what I've been on. I've been on some. You know, some some healing, some healing myself thing, and um, do you know what I mean? Like like this 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 gong thing, what I'm doing, this gong baths and that. It's just it's just it's turned me into a new person, bro. Because you know what? It's made me more calmer. Um, I didn't really I didn't suffer with anxiety, and I've never been a drink or or in depression or things like that. But there's been times in my life I've been down, and I realised when I'm down, it's me that's making me down. Um, and these things here help you focus. And, 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 and know that, boy, there's more out there. There's more out there, bruv. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not just doom and gloom. Do you yeah. get what I mean? It's what you make it. Mm -hmm. And the most importantly about this point is that I've reached to a point in my life where I'm happy. My home, my home life is happy. So that's a big thing because 
I realised when I was younger, I was always escaping from home, trying to get away, trying to fly out, trying to do this because I had, even when I was on my own and I lived on my own long time, do you know what I mean? Or whatever, but I was lonely, do you know what I mean? And then you don't want to, so it's like finding that balance, but definitely like happiness is, 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 a, is a good thing because like once you've got within happiness and you've got a good energy and a good happiness at home, like everything else falls in place. And I realised that it always comes within and at home. So if you've got, a, if you, you're happy within and you, you can create that happy life at home, like don't, we go, we're human beings, we go through problems, we go through this, we go through that, but it's how you deal with it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's what me and my, me and my partner have just been like on this mission and we've moved out, you know what I mean? I finally moved out the hood, do you know what I mean? All, mm. After all these years, do you know what I mean? And I've not looked back, mm. do you know what I mean? Not to say there's anything wrong with that, but mm. I just feel like we have to progress, you have to, Move on in life, man. You can't stand stagnant and the same because otherwise you will be like that forever. Do you know what I mean? And there's always room for improvement. I'm not sitting there saying, oh, yeah, this and that. Like, I'm always improve, trying to improve things all the time. And it's made my career fall in place even more because I've got different avenues of revenue. And I work for myself, got my own company. Do you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm happy the way things have... I've progressed, but there's always room for improvement. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, I'm glad you shared that because... Um because again, this is what these talks are about. You know, they're about seeing another side to the entertainer. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? And 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 um, and man like me, I love a gong, gong bar. I'll tell you straight. <laughs> when it comes to the gong bar, yeah, you know, yeah. don't. Hey, let me tell you something. What? I, I, Sing, I, I, what? Singing bowls. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Unless you've I'm tried talking it, bowls on your body, and they listen, play this stuff on you, and your whole body vibrates. Yeah. Your body shakes like that, yeah. Big shout goes out to Faye, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, Faye Williams, yeah? Because Faye took me to a gong bath as well, to a chapel. I saw him the other night, actually. Where did I see him? I saw him at Fabio and Groove Riders um, event, which was, uh, yeah. which was some time ago. But, um, and I swear, we, it, was like a, it was like a gong bath. And I got in, lay down. Yeah. Closed my eyes. Five minutes later. You know what I mean? Open my eyes, the thing's finished. I'm like, why, why, why are we finishing you so slept, quickly? You went to sleep straight away. He, he goes, we've been in here for an hour. I said, what are yes. you talking about? Yeah, yeah, goes, yeah, Ron, same thing. I said, Ron, we've been in here yeah, for an hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, that was not an hour. I just, yeah. I just closed my eyes. Easy, easy. And uh, so anyway, um, it's nice that I'm not alone. <laughs> no, 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 no. And you know what? Like the first, I'll be honest with you, the first six months I went, yeah. like I just fell asleep. Yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> even that, it knocks me out. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it, what it is, is you, it entunes you, your body, to the to the universe and things like that. And what it is, is frequencies. So, like, you might not be getting good sleep and it can help you with so much things, like anxiety, mm. stress, like sleeping, mm. like, oh, my God. Like, mm. I'm telling you, the way it makes you feel after, for the mm. next, for days after, like, the feeling you can't explain. Like, you're in your own bubble. Mm. You've got your own protection bubble around you and that's how you feel. And that's when you, when you consistently do it, I'm on, to, I'm on a different level now. I'm on meditation and, and chanting and all that. Like, bro, like... This is a different the, chapter. The, and, you, and I'll say this as well. I'll say this as we come close to the end of our conversation. Yeah. I'll say that um, I've seen that change in you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I remember during the lockdown, actually, you came to mine and we did a radio show yes, from mine. Yes, yes, yes. Do you yes, know what I mean? Yes, from my yes, flat, yeah? Yeah, yeah. When I come on missus and that, innit? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was the first time yeah. I'd met your yeah. partner. And I... Even then, yeah, which was two years ago. Yeah, I saw well, that. It was two years ago. It's two mad. years ago that was already. That's mad. Do you know what I mean? That was two yeah. years ago, and I saw a change in you that obviously now has grown and blossomed. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You know, like if you'd have said, if I'd have said to you three years ago, yo. I want to take you down a gong bar. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. I, I want to like, tell you about meditation. Said, what is or that? I tell you about like, and, I, and, yeah. So I've always, I'm a strong believer in those things yeah. only. They, they come to you mm. when you're ready for them. You well, know I'm, I mean? I've been on a journey and me and, me and my missus have been on a journey and what it is, you meet people along the way and they take you to the next level. That's very And sure. I, like I'm gone up and I've gone up and then now nah, we've met like a, like a Buddha lady, which is a lovely lady from Kingston. Mm. Um, and she's, she's changed our life. In the last six months, she's changed our life even more um, in a way where it's just taken us up, up. And it's not a game you can't complete it, but it just makes you feel so good and, and, and it gives you extra energy and miracles can happen, bro. Like, 
Like, I just bought a house for my missus last year. Like, I've been in the hood all my life, do you know what I mean? I've never moved on, I've never had my shit tight, you know what I mean? I work for my, work for myself, set up my own company, sorted out all my finance problems, what I had growing up, do you know what I mean? All the madness and, and just carrying that weight. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? We were talking about it the other day. Yeah. So, like, things like that. I mean, I never thought that I'd get to that stage where mm -hmm. I can do that. And it's mm -hmm. just been just not easy, far from easy, but things happen. Mm -hmm. And you say, why did that happen? That happened for a reason. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's all about what you put out there as well. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, I, I've always dealt with love. Do you know what I mean? I've always be, I'm a strong believer of dealing with love, no matter what. So I'll show my love true, and spread so yeah, my love. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't care. I don't deal with hate. Mm. I'm not a hater. I don't hate on man. If man's doing well and he's killing it, I'm saying, bruv, congratulate. I've always been like that. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I want a piece of the pie. Mm. But that's down to me, isn't it? Like, wherever I get it a different way or I do or whatever. But I'm not going to hate on a man because he's got a thing. So I just deal with love. And that's got me a long way. Do you know what I mean? And that's what's kept me in the game for 33 years because... There's been times it's not about money. There's been times it's not about this and colour, race, anything like that. It's just about love, bro, for me. And that's all I'm going to continue to deal with, you know what I mean? And that, 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 that's got me far, far enough. Mm. And I'm sure it will take me further, do you get what I'm saying? And I think, personally, that that is the perfect place to, the court to, to say thank you very much course, for joining man. us on the, on the notion that Love is the answer to everything. Trust people. me, love. Trust me. And respect. And respect. And respect is earned. You know, love what I mean? is it's the most powerful, you get what I'm powerful force. I love, in I love over anything. It sounds bro. like an old cliche. No, no, no. It sounds silly. When people, when people hear it from out, they think, oh, yeah. But you know what, bruv? Deal with love, man. Deal yeah. with love, and love will take you far, bro. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If you do things from the heart, mm. trust me. That's, that's where we're going to leave it. Yeah. Shaba, thanks for joining us, yeah, man. I man. appreciate it's that, my brother. Yeah, bless up for yeah, that. Man. Yeah, much bless, appreciated. Man. Yeah. Nice. Yeah.